Hey, explorers, welcome back. We are on a journey with Lewis and Clark, and we're going to discover the Louisiana territories. So in the last few lessons, we've talked about how um, Clark went on a mission or an expedition for President Jefferson, and he asked them to find a waterway to Pacific Ocean, study the plants and animals of the Louisiana Territory so they could figure out what was going on with it and make friends with all the Native Americans, okay? So right now, they're just setting off on their journey. But in today's lesson, we're gonna actually be in the, um, what they call the Great Plains, okay? Nowadays, it's where like Colorado, Kansas, Montana, Nebraska, New Mexico, North Dakota, Oklahoma, South Dakota, Texas, and Wyoming. That's all the Great Plains, okay? But back then it was just the Louisiana Territory. So they're going to discover what is all in this area. And at this time, not families had traveled to the Louisiana Territory, so they didn't know what was out there, but there was lots of Native Americans that had been out there. So today I want you to read or listen as I read, and we're gonna see if Lewis and Clark are doing any of the tasks. Okay, remember there's three tasks. And in today's, they're gonna to try to accomplish two of these three tasks. And I want you to listen to see whether or not they're successful and which two tasks they're gonna accomplish, okay? So before we do that though, let's go over our vocabulary words. First word is fascinated, very interested in or attracted to something. The puppy was fascinated by the squirrels in the park. Guided led by someone or something. The dog guided the lost children back to their home. Honored, treated and thought of with respect, held in high regard and thought of as, with importance. The kind man was honored at a special ceremony in his generosity to the school or for his generosity to the school. Prairie, a flat land with grass and not many trees. The grass on the prairie waved as the wind blew. All right, guys, now we're ready to go on this journey with Lewis and Clark. So let's get started. Let me hide these controls. There we go. Okay. On July 19th, 1804, William Clark found himself at the edge of an ocean. It was not the Pacific Ocean. The vast sea to the west that Clark and his friends hoped to, that hoped to reach. In fact, it was not an ocean of water at all. It was a large flat area of land covered in grass called a prairie. So got it. Around here we've got lots of mountains and hills and things like that, but the prairie was a lot of flat land and it had some really tall grasses. So it kind of looked like an ocean. So a prairie goes as far as the eye can see, just like the ocean. Now, when it talks about going as far as the eye can see, if you stood on a beach and you looked out, all you would see is water until you could no longer see. And that's what he's seeing is he's standing in one area and he's looking out and all he can see is this flat land and it just goes on as far as he can see. Clark was out hunting for the expedition and spotted some elk tracks, which he followed up a hill. He later described what he found at the top. I came suddenly into an open and boundless prairie. I could not see the edges in any direction. This was so sudden and entertaining that I forgot the elk I had been following. Clark had reached the eastern edge of what today we call the Great Plains. Wild grass as high as Clark's knee stretch out and blew gently in the wind, interrupted every so often by a hill grove of trees. The, that sea of grass stretched all the way to the distant Rocky Mountains, which it would take the Corp of Discovery weeks more to reach. Okay, so remember they're traveling in a group and they call themselves the Corp of Discovery. During those weeks, the explorers saw many plants and animals new to them. Meriwether Lewis was especially fascinated or interested by the pronghorn antelope, called pronghorns for short. 
He tried to get close enough to draw pictures of them, but the pronghorns always ran away. Pronghorns have incredibly sharp eyesight and a strong sense of smell to warn them of approaching danger. When Lewis finally came close to a pronghorn and got a good look at the long curved horns that gave the animal its name, he wrote, the speed of this animal is equal, if not superior, to that of the finest racing horse. The pronghorn is my favorite of all the animals we have encountered so far. Now, let's look at this one a little closer. You can see his horns. They kind of resemble deer. They look a little bit like deer. These are not deer. These are antelope. And we don't have antelope in our area where we live unless we go and look at one at the zoo. But out in the West or in the Great Plains area, they have them roaming around. Oh, look at that little guy. The explorers were also astonished by the prairie dog, a tiny rodent. These little creatures, related to squirrels, lived together by the thousands in what the men came to call prairie dog towns. The prairie dog towns consisted of underground tunnels that sometimes stretched out for miles across the flat plains. We have to catch one of these to send back to President Jefferson, when William Clark declared, but catching a prairie dog was not so easy. One prairie dog, standing guard above its hole in the ground, saw the men coming and chirped a high-pitched warning. Instantly, all the creatures dived down into the ground. The men dug down after them, but found that the tunnels went down more than six feet below the surface, spreading out in all directions, with emergency exits to escape their predators, hawks, coyotes, and snakes, all of whom considered prairie dogs to be delicious snacks. Clark wrote down their findings about the prairie dogs and proghorn antelope in his journal. So we don't really have prairie dogs in our area either, but we can see them in zoos. It's on the side of our roads and they kind of look a little like them, don't they? Still following the Missouri River across the prairie, the expedition moved on. Soon they began to meet new tribes of Native Americans. Most were friendly and welcoming, especially one tribe called the Yankton Sioux. A few of the Yankton guided or led the travelers for a few days, but then said, you are coming to the land of the Teton Sioux. We will not be able to guide you any longer. Look right down here, little squirrels or maybe prairie dogs running around. Lewis and Clark had already heard about the Teton Sioux. President Jefferson wanted them to become friends with the Teton Sioux. However, the Teton Sioux were not interested in trade with the settlers and did not want to allow Lewis and Clark on their land. Okay, so they've already hit. Oh, maybe a little, kind of like a, ugh, how are we gonna get around this? A little blip on their map here. One September afternoon, John Coulter, one of the expedition's best hunters, was following the tracks of an animal. Coulter dismounted from his horse to look more closely. So that means he got off his horse. Some Teton Sioux hiding among the nearby trees on their own horses shouted and rushed forward, riding off with Coulter's horse. Coulter walked back to the river and reported to Lewis and Clark what had happened. Then it five Teton Sioux appeared on the shore, calling out to talk to Lewis and Clark. Captain Clark answered, we will not speak with you until our horse is returned. Mm. Okay, so, so far the Teton Sioux are not being very friendly or helpful. So they're trying to be friendly with them. So they're saying, hey, if you bring back our horse, then we'll talk to you. Minutes later, more than 200 Teton warriors, all armed with bows and arrows, rode out from the trees and spread out along the riverbank. So the warriors are the people who fight in their battles. So it's kind of like their army. The Teton Sioux were ready to fight to protect their land. Captain Clark remembered that President Jefferson wanted them to be friends with the Teton Sioux. He quietly ordered, stop the boats, and hold them steady here in the middle of the river. Clark, smiling, called, 
We come as friends from our grand chief. The chief that Clark was talking about was President Jefferson. We invite your chiefs to come and see our great boat. I think that's gonna work. Let's see. Clark ordered a few soldiers to row him to shore in a pre row, can't say that word, after greeting the three main chiefs. Clark brought two of them aboard the keelboat. Then he and Lewis were friendly to the Teton Sioux and gave them gifts. Then Clark and the oarsmen took the chiefs back to the shore. Okay, so the oarsman is the person who is going to row the boat. So this man down here, see how he's got the oars in his hand? He's the one that paddles the boat. Meanwhile, Captain Lewis stood ready on the keelboat's bow and his soldiers kept rifles in their hands or immediately by their sides in case of trouble. Everything seemed to be going well until suddenly one chief shouted, your gifts are not good enough. You may not return to your big boat until you give us better gifts. Sioux warriors grabbed their pirogue's rope and held it securely. Oh boy, I think they're gonna get out of this one. Clark knew that the Teton Sioux honored courage. So remember they were people who acted brave. So he honored people who were acting brave. If he showed any sign of weakness at this moment, the Tetons might attack. Even if there were no fight, any chance of a strong friendship with the Tetons could disappear. Clark whipped his sword out and holding it high firmly demanded, release our boat at once. Back on the keelboat, Lewis ordered his men prepare arms. Only on my order may you fire and not a second before. Instantly, the soldiers raised their rifles. In answer, the Teton raised their bows and set arrows, ready to shoot the court of discovery. No one moved. The silence stretched out for a long, tense moment. Then a Sioux chef, let me try that. Sioux chief told his oarsmen, return to the kill. I'm sorry. The Sioux chief told the warriors holding the rope, let go. They obeyed. Clark told his oarsmen, return to the keelboat. One of his men quietly asked, without you, sir, I gave you an order, Clark said in a voice that sounded much calmer than he actually felt. What do you think he was actually feeling? I'd be scared and nervous. I wouldn't know what was going on. Oh, I forgot to slide that one. Sorry, guys. So that's, they all wrote, got their swords and their guns ready, bows and arrows. There he is going back. To As the pirogue rushed off from the riverbank, Teton warriors surrounded Clark. Lewis could only see his friend's hat over the shoulders of the Sioux. Lewis gave orders, and as the pirogue reached the keelboat, a number of armed soldiers got into the pirogue and started back for Clark. But then suddenly the Tetons moved away from Clark. Clark's bravery had impressed the Tetons, and the Tetons thought that Clark was brave because he stood up to them. They smiled in friendship and invited the members of the expedition to their village. The explorers accepted the invitation. The Corps of Discovery had survived a dangerous situation. What they did not know was that even greater dangers and even greater victories still lay ahead. Okay, so guys, this was an intense one today. It was a little dangerous for them because they encountered a Native American tribe, the Teton Sioux, that were not very friendly. They did not want their land messed with. And I don't blame them. I wouldn't want my land messed with either. So they almost went to a, like a fight or a war with the Native Americans and the Corps of Discovery. Thankfully, they didn't though. Thankfully, they made peace. Okay, so let's talk about what we learned today. What is the area called where today's read aloud took place? The Great Plains. Um, what animals did Lewis and Clark discover? Discover two that we talked about. Remember what they are? The prairie dog and the prog, prong horn antelopes. Okay, before Lewis and Clark's explorations, Pioneer families living in the United States had not explored or settled in the Louisiana Territory. 
to live in all that land for thousands of years? The Native Americans. Okay, so Clark met two different Native American tribes, the Yankton Sioux and the Teton Sioux. How were their meetings with the two tribes different? Well, the Yankton Sioux were very friendly and helpful and even helped guide them, but the Teton Sioux were not helpful. They were not friendly. They actually wanted them to leave and get off their land, and it almost went to a war. So how are they the same? They eventually became friends. All right, which two of President Jefferson's tasks did Lewis and Clark accomplish in today's read aloud? They discovered some plants and animals, or discovered animals, and they made friends with some Native American tribes. All right, friends, don't forget to go and do your questions in Google Classroom and make sure you turn them in to me. If you have any questions, don't forget you can email me or message me in Google Classroom. All right, friends, I'll see you, my little explorers, on our next lesson when we meet somebody special. We'll see. Bye, friends.